So where was I before I fell off the face of the earth? Oh yes, the cloud. I promised you a part four. Welcome to part four. O almost. Hi, I'm Mikola, and I'm not only back on YouTube, I'm back talking about the cloud. What? Yes, yes, I'm going to do it. Oh, be still my fluttering heart. But since it's been a while, and since some of you have joined since I originally did the cloud series, here's a quick recap. It's the prequel to part four. I'm calling it Cloud 3.5. Part four next week. Promise. People still tell me they're confused about the cloud. Look, it's easy. The cloud is just shorthand for something that's out there on the internet. This video is coming to you from the cloud. Instagram is in the cloud. PayPal, the cloud. Salesforce.com, the cloud. World of Warcraft, the cloud. Skype, the cloud. Daily Mail Online, the cloud. Netflix, the cloud. I could go on. Gmail, the cloud. Dropbox, the cloud. Twitter, the Okay, I'll stop. I'll stop. Tumblr, the cloud. I'll stop. Anything you see in your web browser and lots of things you see in special clients are all from the cloud. Bandcamp, the cloud. All right, I'll stop. To repeat, cloud is just a one syllable word for something on the internet somewhere. Where? Doesn't really matter. North Carolina, Dublin, Luleo, Sydney, Singapore. Don't worry where it actually is. That's the magic of the cloud. Somebody else is buying the servers, paying the electric bill, running the backups. That's not your problem. Not to worry. It's safe, I hope. So now we're all up to speed once again. Any service or file that isn't stored locally on your own hard drive or processed locally on your PC or living on your own local area network is coming to you from where? The cloud. That's all it is. But Nicola, the internet has been with us for years. Why are we just now hearing about all this cloud stuff? Because they're trying to sell us something. It used to be the cloud was an insider term used strictly among tech heads. The old deal was if you're parking your stuff on someone else's servers, they just straight out charge you rent. If you're using their software applications, they charge you a fee. But then marketing got a hold of the word and decided we all should start using it because the tech giants want us to use their cloud for free. Why? You don't really think it's free, do you, Hank? It's a trap, literally. They're trying to bind us to them so they can sell us more stuff or sell us to advertisers who want to sell us more stuff. It's that simple. For more on this, watch John Green's You Are the Product. The strategy is to get us to park our stuff on their servers. Why? Because the more we put our stuff, our videos, photos, music, the tighter we're locked to them for future purchases. They call that being sticky. Yes, Mikola. But why would we want to put our stuff in their cloud? Ah, the answer's in your pocket. Or your living room. Smartphones, game consoles, tablets. More and more people have multiple hardware devices. And if we put our stuff on the cloud, we get to enjoy it on any one of our devices anywhere. At home, at work, in school, at Starbucks. And with social media, our friends can enjoy it too, provided we have rights to what we're sharing. Our tech world is no longer just about devices. It's about fluid access to whatever or whomever is important to us wherever we happen to be. All the tech giants know this, but I think Apple was the first to build it out and get it into people's hands. Okay, I know there are people who resent Apple for that, and I'll probably hear from them in the comments. I get it. Apple's system is only fluid if you stay inside their world. And if everybody crawls inside their world, then Apple will have too much power. Besides, you only get easy and flexible access to things that Apple makes or sells or approves for sale. Now, Apple will tell you that's to ensure a great user experience, and detractors will tell you that's to block competitors and maximize the flow of our dollars into Apple's treasury. No reason they can't both be right. Microsoft, Google, and Amazon aren't standing still. They're fighting to replicate for their own customers what Apple customers already enjoy. Each player, starting from their own point of strength and looking to find more squares that they can own while blocking their competitors. As a result, all the cloud services are just slightly different. And that's probably what people mean when they say they're confused about the cloud. What they really mean is, whose cloud does what? What am I gaining and what am I giving up by signing up with this cloud or that cloud? Can I sign up to multiple services? Disclaimer, I used to work at Apple. I use and love their products. I own shares. So please feel free to discount anything I say on the subject. But know this, I'm not going to use this series to recommend one cloud system over another or even to get into the weeds about how they differ. What interests me is the multi-dimensional chess that these companies are engaged in. So now that we're all on the same page, we can move forward together, which we will do when we get to the actual part four next week. I'm looking forward to it. Until next time, I'm Mikola. Memo to marketing. Hire the Rolling Stones to sing, Hey, you, get onto my cloud. It's an old song, Mikola. The kids don't know it.